Glenn decided to break up with Jennifer a week ago. They fought all the time because Jennifer was always jealous of him. In the six months that they had been together, Glenn got tired of her, as if he had lived with her for ten years. One day, after another quarrel with Jennifer, Glenn got on his motorcycle and went to the countryside. He wanted to breathe in some fresh air, to be alone, to sit by the sea, looking at the waves. He sat on a high cliff, looking at the waves and thinking about his life. Suddenly, somewhere below, he heard a thin girl's voice and some kind of commotion. Glenn went down to the shore and saw that the thin young woman was trying to get a puppy out of a small hole in the water. It was all wet, dirty, whimpering pitifully, but would not let go. Glenn helped the girl. Her name was Tara, and she often came here because it was her favourite place to read books and get ready for exams. And today she saw this puppy abandoned by someone and wanted to save him. I'm going to take him for myself. I live with my parents in a house in the next village. We will have such a guardian. The puppy whimpered and hid his face in Tara's palm. The girl smiled at Glenn and he realised he had fallen under the invisible spell of that smile. And how did you get here? He asked, not knowing how to keep up a conversation with this lovely stranger. On foot. I'm on my motorcycle. Can I give you a ride home? Tara smiled again and after asking if it was convenient, agreed. Soon, Glenn, after saying goodbye to Tara at her house, drove to his place. Now he knew where she lived, and he was sure that they would meet more than once. Glenn parked his motorcycle in front of his house and switched on his phone. There were many calls and messages from Jennifer. Glenn sighed. It couldn't go on like this. He was tired of her endless jealousy and resentment. When he met Jennifer a day later, Intending to break up, everything did not go according to plan. Glenn failed to say what he wanted to say. Jennifer was crying, her grandmother was gone, and of course, a breakup was out of the question. Still, Glenn started going to see Tara. They had a good time together, often went out into nature and especially loved the beach, where they first met. It was there that Glenn proposed to Tara. The girl said yes, she was happy, especially since another life had begun beneath her heart. She didn't say anything to Glenn. She wanted to do it in a more festive atmosphere to make it a memorable moment in his life. In the evening of the same day, Glenn received a phone call from Jennifer's mother, who told him in tears what had happened. Glenn, I've always treated you well, but I never thought you would do this to my daughter. She hid from me that she was pregnant, and then I accidentally found out that you had another woman. Jennifer got really hysterical. She lost the baby, and it turned out that now she probably won't have any more children. Do you understand? Never! Jennifer is in the hospital. She's very sick, and you don't answer her calls. Glenn went to the hospital. Jennifer, swollen with tears, greeted him with reproaches. Why did you come? Go to her. Go. I'm not keeping you. But when he turned to leave, she grabbed his hand. No, no, forgive me. Stay. If you leave me and go to her, I will not survive. And Glenn stayed. He stayed with Jennifer. He felt guilty before her because it was because of him that she had lost her child. Because of him, she wouldn't be able to be a mother. So... He had to share her grief with her. When Glenn met Tara, he honestly confessed everything to her. The girl did not cry, did not reproach or accuse him of anything. She said quietly, looking him in the eye, You are doing the right thing. If you had done differently, I would have stopped respecting you. Go to her, she needs you. And don't think about me. I'll be leaving soon. Goodbye, Glenn and I'll keep this as a memory. 
She rose on her toes, took his face in her hands and kissed him with a long, tender kiss. And then she left. She didn't admit to him that she was expecting a baby. She knew that now it would be unnecessary and painful for him. And Tara was more afraid of hurting him than anything else in the world. For the first time in his life, Glenn, a grown and strong guy, was crying and not holding back his tears. He stood alone on his and Tara's beach, and only the sea saw his grief. Twelve years had passed. Glenn and Jennifer were married, but their marriage could not be called happy. Jennifer, quarrelsome and contentious character, became more and more apparent with each passing year. She constantly found a reason for a scandal. She broke down over nothing, could throw a tantrum in the street, on a visit, just among people. In doing so, she always blamed Glenn for ruining her life. Glenn did not know that she could have children, and what her mother once told him was nothing more than a desire to keep her daughter's fiancé. A mature, wise woman, she had it all figured out. She warned Jennifer and told her how she should behave. Yes, they hadn't lied about the abruptly terminated pregnancy, but the incident hadn't caused Jennifer any physical trauma. She was healthy now. She just didn't want kids. She liked going to the sea with her husband, vacationing in Turkey and Greece, fully enjoying her life. Glenn was making good money, and Jennifer had no need for anything and was not going to change anything in her life. And Glenn lived as if in a vacuum, and with a huge burden of guilt to Jennifer and to Tara. He never wanted to go home. He was not interested in women, although many young and not-so-young female employees constantly and explicitly hinted to always serious and unsmiling Glenn that they were quite attracted to him. Only his motorcycle brought him joy. When he raced into the wind, he was almost happy. However, lately, Glenn rarely rode it because he started drinking in bars more and more often. Drunk, he would come home and fall asleep on the couch without undressing. In the morning, he listened to Jennifer with a frown, and in the evening, it was all over again. Jennifer, realising that this could go on indefinitely, screamed and, as usual, accused him of ruining her youth. Glenn did not know that his wife had been dating his own business partner for almost four months. Glenn himself had lost interest in her long ago and could no longer remember the last time they had been close. One morning, he saw his wife's pale face. She was clearly not feeling well. "'What's the matter with you?' he asked anxiously. "'I don't know. I'm dizzy and nauseous a lot. I must have been poisoned.' Suddenly, Jennifer, staggering, fainted. Glenn called an ambulance and with difficulty brought his wife to her senses. The paramedic made a quick examination and immediately suggested that it was pregnancy. Glenn could not believe his ears, but although Jennifer protested, he insisted on visiting a doctor. The pregnancy was confirmed. When Glenn heard this, he laughed out loud. The doctor thought the father-to-be was thrilled, but Glenn laughed because he couldn't cry any more. He had cried only once in his life, there by the sea, when he broke up with Tara because of Jennifer, who turned out to have lied to him all his life. They had divorced. Now his ex-wife was no longer bothering him, and his life slowly began to get better. Glenn forgot about drinking, now he was free and began to ride his motorcycle more and more often, remembering his youth. One day, as he rode up to his favourite beach, something crunched in the front tyre and Glenn flew over the handlebars and fell. Severe pain pierced his leg. It didn't seem to be fractured, but dislocated, that was for sure. He saw a boy hurrying toward him from the beach, pulling on his shirt as he went. "'What's wrong?' Are you all right? Do you need help? Give me your hand and help me up, Glenn replied, grimacing in pain. The boy put his shoulder up and Glenn 
trying not to put too much pressure on it, got up somehow. His knee was swelling up before his eyes. The boy shook his head. You need to see a doctor. I'll make a quick run to the village. Our house is on the outskirts. I'll get someone to help right away. Glenn wanted to stop the boy, but he had already run for help. Glenn had a strange feeling as if he'd already seen this boy somewhere. Two minutes later, a car pulled up to him. There was a stranger at the wheel and a boy sitting next to him. Well, Lloyd, the driver said to the boy, can you push the motorcycle all the way back to your house? Tell your mother I asked for it and I'll take the injured man to the emergency room. Don't worry, nothing will happen to your motorcycle. Glenn thanked the boy and went with the man. Only two weeks later, he was able to return for his motorcycle. He brought some fruit and sweets, not knowing what kind of family would meet him. He had no trouble finding the right house. There was a motorcycle in the yard, carefully wrapped in a tarp. Glenn's heart thumped. He recognised the house. At that time, Lloyd looked out the window and shouted into the back of the house, Mom! and came out on the threshold to meet his guest. A smiling woman, with her hands dusted with flour, followed him out. Suddenly she cried out and began to sink to the floor slowly. It was Tara. Glenn, dropping the bags, rushed to her, kissed her hands, ignoring the fact that he was getting dirty in the flour, kissed her cheeks, hugged her, cried and laughed at the same time. She too was crying and laughing. Lloyd, not understanding anything, looked at them. Six months passed. Glenn and Tara were married. Lloyd quickly became friends with his father and often went out of town with him to learn how to ride a motorcycle. His passion for bikes was passed down to him from Glenn by blood. Dear friends, I hope you enjoyed this story. It's never too late to wise up and it's never too late to change your fate.